It's a wet morning in Lagos and you know something, the rain never stops business in Lagos. Actually, in some cases, the rain enhances business in Lagos. This morning is not going to be different. It is a wet morning and business will continue in Lagos. Good business, profitable business, clean business. And it is Oraji doing business in Lagos. Today, you wonder what we're focusing on. You wonder where I am. Hmm. I'm at a very large expense of land somewhere in Lagos or Jota to be precise. It is the mechanic village here in Ojota. We have auto technicians here, we have panel beaters, vulganizers, rewires, battery chargers, we have even fabricators. I am Busola Kukoi, welcoming you to the program. Together, we're going to find out how do these small and medium businesses, those involved in auto mechanics, I'm talking about them now, how do they make money? How do they survive? Is it profitable? Is it good business? Is government involved in this kind of business? Come along with me as we enter the Ojota Moto Mechanic Workshop. <laughs> The government began the day's activity at the premises of the old Eco Engineering Ventures Limited, but which now houses the Costaris Group Eco Limited Liability Partnership, an ultramodern state of the art automobile center, a joint partnership between Lagos State Government and Costaris Group. This center, beyond sales, servicing, and maintenance of all brands of vehicles, will also provide auto mechanical training for different categories of automobile students. The government believes this initiative is in line with its policy trust in the area of job creation, youth development, and capacity building. The concept of ownership necessarily requires that we should rethink and rework our models. What do we want to achieve? For me, our biggest achievement will be the skilled personnel that will come out of this institution when finally kicks off now. That would be our biggest achievement. That would be our most profitable balance sheet. From the PWD location of the center, the governor's entourage moved to the headquarters of the Lagos State Drivers Institute at Ikeja. The inspection of the state of equipment at the center is not unconnected with the need for the governor to ascertain the level of preparedness of the institutes and its branches across the state, even as the government intends to henceforth enforce the provisions of the traffic laws to the letter. Uh, there are a lot of cars in Lagos, uh, a sign of prosperity, I always say, and, uh, but we need to manage it. We can't build our way out of congestion. Uh, the traffic, the commercial center, the ownership of vehicles, which are signs of prosperity, create their own challenges. So from one success, you go on to a new problem which is managing the congestion and therefore we need more safety and road regulation aware drivers. The law says that all corporate bodies, all organizations, all employers of drivers that are supposed to send their drivers to the institute and that have not sent such drivers to the institute, there's a law, uh, that, there's a punitive measure that government can take under the law. So, but in terms of uh, the facilities, I can tell you that we are ready to receive uh, candidates that are supposed to be trained. The next port of call was the ongoing construction site of Isokakuduo or Tramoda Market in Oshodi, where the governor expressed his view on the need to commercialize the whole environment with comfortable infrastructural facilities. What I see there is, 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 is uh, it's already making me think that can be a whole shopping avenue that will show the road you already see models that look like that so if we open up that road for pedestrian work and uh, many more people you see people already converting their homes into shops so if people want really to build markets we are open to review the planning for that we should the road area and nothing will be better there's a major bus depot at Oshodi, so you can shop get onto a bus and go home 
The governor's activities in Osho the Axis did not end on Tuesday until he inspected the newly acquired site for the repairs of Lagbos fleet of buses at Bolade. When fully furnished, this will complement the existing Lagbos workshops across the state. <music> So you can try it and start it now. Mm -hmm. Can you believe it? I am already a graduate of the mechanic. Thank goodness. Things are happening in Lagos. So making good money is not easy. But we'll make it in Lagos. Well, that was the business headlines. Now I'll be taking you over now to Tundewa Laiwala. You know, I told you earlier that she told me a few things just before um, we came um, over here. She talked about a man that has a workshop where they build vehicle bodies, not body parts, vehicle bodies. And the man has an example about 50 people. Do you think that is small business? Let us go over now to Tunde Laiwala and get a few tips from her and listen to what she has to say. Tunde, over to you. Thank you very much, Busola. You are still watching Oroaje doing business in Lagos. And today, our journey takes us to these vehicle body builders. And I'm going to be talking to Mr. Solomon Ackman, who is going to be taking us through the process of actually building bodies for vehicles. You won't say that we have quite a lot of noise in the background. This is because there is quite a lot of activities going on here today in the process of building bodies for vehicles locally here in Lagos. Hello, sir. You're welcome to Oruaje. Thank you very much, madam. All right, thank you. Now, can you, can you just tell me in a nutshell, how did this all begin? What, what, what does it involve to become you know, a vehicle body builder like this? Well, it takes a lot. Just like the common saying that uh, a house is not built in a day. But you have to start with a very long processing. Even though I'm here since 1996, it's a very long period of time. But it wasn't easy initially. Because we started, I started from a smaller scale, but now we thank God that we are here today. So we are into building of uh, various bodies of vehicles, pickups, trucks, tankers, trailers, and others. Now, how do you source for your materials? Do you get them locally? How does the process, how does it work? Actually, we got some uh, locally and some we bring them in. We import them. Now, can you just tell me, are there any challenges that you face in the course of, you know, doing business here? Obviously, in Nigeria, you know, it's not easy for a businessman to grow. First, we have a, a challenge in raising money, because to raise money is a problem. If you go to bank, the interest rate is so high that at the end of the day, it's like working for the bank. And there is nowhere government supported us, so it's very, very hectic for us. Now, any other challenges, any other things that, you know, happen in the course of, you know, getting this on ground like this? What, what, what does it actually even involve? Let's start from there. How do you start this? How do I start? Well, obviously, I learned the work. Not only that, I still have to travel abroad also to learn more. But obviously, it's not easy to build a vehicle because it entails start first sorting for the materials then trying to crack your brain how to modify this body how to put it to shape as we are seeing this one now this body now are escorts at the time we finish it now we will now send it to the spring department and as we finish you see those finished product up there others are mounting them but in reality it's not easy because sometimes Nepal will be off. And generator, it's not easy to run diesel in Nigeria. You know, so we are really hoping that maybe one day, somehow, government will come to our rescue. 
what areas specifically do you want or need government intervention? What can government do to help this kind of business grow? Well, you know, like uh, other countries where their government set aside certain funds for the technicians, so that at least at, at any point in time, when, when government see it fits that this group of people qualify or this individual who qualify, we can easily apply and government will just assist us instead of going to bank and get, you know, money that the interest rate will always be too high. So, How lucrative is this business itself? Uh, in reality, like you normally know, the more you put in in business, the, the more you get back. So, but like you see here now, if I've had enough money, I could have had more than the work that I have here. Because if they bring the work and I don't have money to execute it, then it's a problem. So that means I can only take what I can do at the time. In order not to mess up myself, and my client will always be after me. Just tell me, what, what, and what specifically, specifically do you do? What do you build? How do you do it? How long does it take? Well, like this body that we are seeing now is aluminum body. Okay. These are called low roof. This one. This one's here. So they, they can use this to carry goods. Okay. This one, one of it can take about four days. And we have other one like this one that is here. It's going to be an advert truck. Advert truck. This can take us about a month and a half. It varies. Like the one there is cooling units to carry meat. And this one can take about a month. And because the cooling unit, we just have to import them from overseas. So it depends. Let me ask you this. Um, why do I need to do this locally? What, what's the advantage over the imported ones? There are a lot of advantages. First, it's cheaper. Secondly, it's stronger than the one that you import. So it's, it pays. You buy buying your vehicle, then you build here, instead of buying a complete build body. Okay, thank you very much, sir, for right, sharing man. time with us on Oro Thank, thank you so you, much, Mr. Akman. Thank you. The program is still Oro AJ, as I hand you over now to Busola Kukoi. <laughs> fabricating parts here in Nigeria and not just any parts good parts and um, it's wonderful to note it's really wonderful to note I'm sure that um, some people need to be encouraged he's one of them well you have heard from them how lucrative this business is and the various challenges they have but you know they're not the only ones that are um, stay in this mechanic village like I told you at the onset of this program we have the rewire, we have the battery chargers, we have the vulganizers, we have the engine repairers, we have the panel beater. And I just learned a new one. After panel beating and painting your vehicles, you bake them. <laughs> yes, you bake them in a vehicle oven. <laughs> well, all these people, they come under an umbrella and together they will be presenting the various challenges you could in establishing an auto mechanic business. Come along with me as we go to the Secretariat.